from WNDU, your breaking news and weather authority. This is New Center 16 at 11. Good evening and welcome to the special Decision 2016 edition of New Center 16. I'm Maureen McFadden. And I'm Terry McFadden. Indiana proves to be Bernie Sanders country. We have full coverage of his Hoosier win and his speech tonight on the banks of the Ohio. But we start with the GOP, where Donald Trump is a major step closer to clinching the Republican presidential nomination. Indiana was seen as a must-win state for the real estate mogul if he wished to win the nomination before the Republican convention. And he did just that, coasting to a big win. Trump polled 53% of the votes so far. That's with 95% of the precincts reporting. Ted Cruz, 37%. And John Kasich with 8%. A result so disappointing that Cruz actually stunned many and suspended his presidential campaign, not actively Kasich campaigning in Indiana. Let's go now to Mark Peterson for more on Trump's big night and Cruz's departure from the race. Mark? Terry, Indiana's primary, nothing short of a game changer when it comes to the Republican race for president. It inspired Ted Cruz to suspend his campaign. It inspired Donald Trump to actually say something nice about Ted Cruz. He called Cruz a tough competitor, smart guy with a great future, and it inspired at least one local delegate to the Republican National Convention to start calling for party unity. I've said that I would continue on as long as there was a viable path to victory. Tonight, I'm sorry to say, it appears that path has been foreclosed. I won with women, we won with men, we won with Hispanics, we won with African Americans, we won with every, virtually every category. So it's just been an amazing evening. Donald Trump was certainly not my first choice. I don't know many of uh, many people in the room here that he was their first choice, but you know we are where we are as a party, and uh, we need to move forward uh, and unite if Donald Trump is ultimately the, the nominee. That strained relationship between Trump and his own party painfully obvious tonight at the Sacho County Republican headquarters during the victory party. Not a single Trump campaign sign on the premises. Perhaps uh, the victory in Indiana strong enough to earn him some degree of respect. Mark, thanks a lot. Senator Bernie Sanders has pulled off a critical win as he keeps his hopes for the Democratic presidential nomination alive. Sanders thanks supporters for letting the, quote, political revolution win in Indiana. And here's a look at the numbers. And folks, it was a tight race until the very end. Sanders won 52 percent of the votes, while Clinton got 48 percent. New Center 16's Trisha Hart has been following this race, so even though Hillary Clinton is leading the polls nationally, she did not win Indiana. And she really didn't spend as much time or energy campaigning here. She came in early, left early, spending virtually nothing to win Hoosier votes. But it's clear Hoosiers were feeling the burn. According to CNN, the Vermont senator invested an estimated $1.8 million on advertisements in Indiana prior to the primary, trying to win a majority of votes, a strategy which clearly worked. Clinton, on the other hand, has already moved on. Her last appearance in Indiana was two days ago. She was seen campaigning in West Virginia and Ohio. Sanders rallied in South Bend Sunday night and returned to New Albany after his win. He continues to hit on his main agenda items like universal access to health care and higher education and says the Hoosier win gives his campaign momentum. I understand that Secretary Clinton thinks that this campaign is over. I've got some bad news for her. Uh, we are talking about in this campaign are the issues that are on the hearts and minds of the American people. The American people are tired of working longer hours for low wages and seeing almost all new income and wealth going to the top 1%. You got a lot of factors coming into this. Bernie Sanders has had a uh, campaign headquarters in St. Joe County now for several weeks. Hillary Clinton's campaign has not. Hillary Clinton has not made any ad buys in Indiana. So a lot of the questions behind that are, did she feel like she was going to win Indiana by a comfortable margin, or is she just ready to move on to the general election? 
Bouncing between Indiana and Kentucky before Sanders Indiana went in was announced, he told the Kentucky crowd that if it was a Trump Sanders race for the presidency, he claims he would win and win by double digits, sowing some confidence there early on. Okay, so what does this win mean for the rest of his campaign? Uh, well, not a whole lot. If you look at the numbers, it's not a huge win for the delegate count overall. He still has to win more than 60% of the remaining pledged delegates in order to get a majority and grab the ultimate Democratic nomination. Clinton only needs to win about 35% to get it all. So the next upcoming races will be very important for his campaign. Okay, thanks, Tricia. Mm -hmm. Well, three men enter the day vying to unseat incumbent second district congresswoman Jackie Walorski. She's going for a third term. Here's a look at the GOP race results. No surprise here. Walorski winning with 70% of the votes, with about 91% uh, of the precincts reporting in the district. She defeated uh, the challenger there, Mr. Jeff Peterman, who got 30% of the vote. The Democratic race was between Lynn Coleman and Douglas Carpenter. And uh, Coleman with a convincing win, 74% of the vote, uh, 26 for Carpenter. Maria Catanz has been following the second district race all day long. Both winners uh, have uh, some name recognition. Walorski, of course, the incumbent. Coleman, a longtime South Bend cop and former mayoral assistant. Right. Uh, so were they surprised by the end result? OPS Polorski says you can never expect to just soar through elections, but she did point to strong voter turnout. And now speaking of turnout, Coleman says the numbers were there for him to, you know, come out on top. But Coleman said when Douglas Carpenter entered the picture, he campaigned like he was on the losing end, canvassing across all counties in District 2. Representative Wolorski says you can't just expect to waltz through victories. She credited her camp of thousands of volunteers, making thousands of phone calls, knocking on thousands of doors. Coleman points to national support from Senator Joe Donnelly, who at one point in time held the second district seat. Now, all eyes turn to November 8th, which is the date of the general election. But are Walorski and Coleman concerned about the other? Well, here is what they had to say. I am not running against Jackie Walorski. Okay, I am running for the people in the second district. And so, you know, I'm out to work for them and to do whatever I can to uh, represent them. You know, my attention has never lost focus of working for the second district, uh, you know, on the committees that I, that I run, the things that we lead on. And I am laser focused on making sure that we continue to lead in the second district and we continue to keep our nation safe. And both candidates say job creation is key. Coleman wants to make sure we don't outsource to other countries or to Mexico. Meanwhile, Representative Walorski told me this afternoon we need more tax reforms, and she added that national security is at an all-time premium. Okay, obviously uh, Walorski is the incumbent. This is Coleman's first election. What uh, motivated him to toss his hat in the ring, so to speak, thinking he could unseat the incumbent? It's a hard thing to do. Right. Well, he kind of pointed to numbers from the 2012 general election when Malorski won only by about one and a half percent over Democratic challenger Brendan Mullen, which boiled down to about 4,000 or so votes. So he's confident that he's that he can get those and secure those 4,000 votes across all the counties. Then Malorski, like she said, that soundbite, she's still focused on working for the second district in the meantime. All right. Maria, thanks a lot. Well, turning now to the third district congressional race which is open as Marlon Stutzman of LaGrange County runs for Senate. The race to replace him was tight for both parties. Let's start with the Republicans, six people in the running, but in the end, Jim Banks won with 34% of the vote. Kip Tom was a close second with a uh, percentage of 31%, and he was followed by Liz Brown and then Pam Galloway. Now to the Democrats. Tommy Schrader walks away the winner tonight. He checks in with 38% of the vote. Todd Neitenhelzer getting 32%. John Roberson, uh, third place with 31% of the vote. And now to the race for that open U.S. Senate seat. And Todd Young won easily over Marlon Stutzman, carrying, if we can bring the numbers up, well, handily defeating 67% of the vote. This race featured increasingly biting exchanges despite both candidate campaigning as stalwart conservatives with similar policy platforms. Although Stutzman raised eyebrows over paying his brother-in-law a large sum of money to run his congressional campaign, his brother-in-law with no experience. Outgoing Senator Dan Coats congratulated Congressman Todd Young on winning the Senate primary, saying in part, when I announced over a year ago that I would not run for re-election, I said that there comes a time to pass this demanding job 
to the next generation. Tonight, Hoosiers definitively chose the person who will carry the torch forward in November. Young now faces Democrat Baron Hill, who ran unopposed. And on now to County Wade Braces, the Democratic nomination for St. Joe County District 3 Commissioner was up for grabs tonight. It was between Phil Dotson and Keith Forsyth. In the end, Dotson uh, took it home with 61% of the vote. New Center 16 Sean Gallagher has been following this race, and he joins us now with more, plus the St. Joe County Coroner's race. Sean? Sorry, Phil Dotson won the 3rd District County Commissioner nomination by 21 points over Keith Forsyth, and the Democrats feel he is the best candidate to take back a majority in the county commissioners this fall. Now, Dotson has been the county recorder for the past eight years, and it's that experience which helped him gain the Democratic nomination. Now, today, he was out trying to make a last-ditch effort to get people to cast votes in his favor, and it obviously paid off. And now all eyes are on November. It's honor. It's honor because I really feel a lot of uh, proudness for the uh, third district. I've lived here 61 years. I've been in the third district 61 years. My wife's been in here 69 years. I feel that they need straight government. If he wins in November, he'd be a great addition to the Board of Commissioners and help restore the democratic balance. Uh, unfortunately, it, there seems to be a lot of wasteful spending going on under the current administration, a lot of lack of transparency, and I believe that uh, Phil will help set these things right. And Dotson will now face Republican incumbent Deb Fleming in the fall. And over in the St. Joseph County Coroner's race, incumbent Randy Magdalinski was defeated by Mike McCann 55 to 45 percent. A high voter turnout in a lesser known race may have done Magdalinski in. Mike McGann, a funeral director for 36 years at McCann Hay Funeral Homes, may have benefited from being a familiar name on the ballot. But nonetheless, he says he's the right candidate to bring change to the county coroner. Well, our family's been here since the early 1900s in the funeral business, you know, since 1842 in this area. Um, you know, I mean, I just know a lot of people, you know, being around the funeral business, working with all the other funeral homes, funeral directors, South Bend policemen for over 25 years, licensed funeral director for over 36 years. So, yes, I, uh, I mean, we're known, uh, but I just think the people realize the job that can be done, that hasn't been done before, that can be done now. Now a little bit of free time. McCann plans on taking a fishing trip, and then once it becomes official that he is the next county coroner in the fall, he'll announce his new team of deputy coroners. Terry? Sean, thanks a lot. Meanwhile, a few uh, races over in Elkhart County on the Republican side of things. In the District 2 GOP race for Elkhart County Commissioner, Mike Yoder pulled 58% of the vote for a win over Mark Yoder. And in the District 3 GOP Commissioner's race, Susie Wirick comes up the winner in a three-way race, getting 52% of the vote, securing a win over Doug Graham and Randall Perry. And a pretty tight race for the GOP County Corner candidates. James Elliott claims victory over Jim Raymer, winning 52% of the vote. And there's more to come on this special decision 2016 edition of News Center 16. We're breaking down key moments with political analyst Jack Caldwell. Plus, a chance to improve local schools in the New Prairie District. We'll have the results for that referendum ahead. And as we go to break, some results from state house races. Welcome back. Indiana has been a roller coaster for Ted Cruz, who made an agreement with John Kasich's campaign to clear the way for a one on one showdown with Donald Trump. But in the end, Trump came out on top, and we saw it when he was here yesterday. Trump was confident that he'd win tonight, pushing him closer to a majority of pledged delegates. We're now, joined we're jo now by our political analyst, Jack Caldwell. And, Jack, you said this was a must win for Ted Cruz at 5 30, and you were right. So, did you see him dropping out tonight? No. I thought it was a must win if he was going to have much of a realistic chance to go on and enforce a contested convention. But he just got clobbered. He lost virtually every delegate. And so he had no path at all to go on, and he just dropped out. 
And this has to firm up the dom nomination for Donald Trump, obviously. Yeah, it's over. Donald Trump will be uh, the Republican nominee. Why do you think Hillary Clinton spent one so little time in Indiana and, and so, so little money? Do you think that was the right decision? Well, I suspect she might, uh, if she had it to do over again, might have spent a little more time and a little more money. She spent no money at all on television. Yeah. And Bernie Sanders spent about $2 million. And uh, Hillary was not in the state uh, the last couple of days. Uh, she didn't work the state that hard. Uh, she thought uh, that she probably could, could win without all that effort, could concentrate on the fall election. Okay. Um, but losing as she did, uh, she's lost some momentum now. Uh, Bernie Sanders is probably going to stay on perhaps longer than he would have. Although in delegates, I think in the final analysis, they'll be about split in Indiana. It, do you think Bernie Sanders ought to step aside at this point? Well, of course, that would be up to, uh, up to him. I think there would be a lot of Democrats who would say, hey, uh, Republicans have their nominee now. Why should we go on fighting? Uh, perhaps uh, that Bernie Sanders should step aside now, endorse Hillary, and uh, let it be a one-on-one -on -one battle for the fall. All right, Jack Caldwell, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank we you. appreciate your expertise on this. Well, in January, New Prairie United School Corporation's board voted to put a $42 million renovation proposal on today's ballot. The board asked the community to pass improvements to New Prairie High School and other facilities in the district. Now, despite the property tax increase to cover the project's cost, 54% of the residents in the district voted yes. New Center 16's Casey Cronus has been watching the results coming in tonight. Casey? Well, it was a fairly close vote, but now it's official. Major improvements are coming soon to New Prairie schools. Several elementary schools in the district, along with New Prairie Middle School, will benefit from the proposal. But about 70% of the plan focuses on New Prairie High School, making both interior and exterior upgrades. Those range from replacing boilers and improving the sewer system to creating a new 1,200-seat auditorium. This won't come without help from residents, though. Property taxes will increase anywhere from $1.50 to $15 per month, depending on home value. The project's costs to be paid back in a 16-year repayment plan. Great communities have great schools, and we already have a great school, but we're really in a position where it's time to reinvest in ourselves to make sure we're in the best position forward for the next 20 to 30 plus years. This is perfect. This is what the school needs and to see where the growth of the school is going and the students there right now that I felt with passion in my heart that this really needs to be done. Superintendent White tells me construction should kick off by late summer or early fall. The project will be completed in phases over three school years. All right, Casey, thank you very much. Turning to other news now. Cass County, there was a bad crash there that left a teenage girl dead. It happened this afternoon near Pine Lake Street and Daly Road. Police say 25-year-old Jeffrey Jackson blew a stop sign on Pine Lake and hit a car with three teens inside. The car flipped over. The driver, 16-year-old Michaela McKenzie of Edwardsburg, was pronounced dead at the scene. The passengers in that car, a 16 and 17-year-old, were taken to the hospital. Jackson also went to the hospital with injuries. Police are still investigating. A man police have been searching for since Friday has been arrested and charged for brutal crimes against a woman. Doug Wood is charged with seven felonies, including two counts of rape, aggravated battery, kidnapping, and strangulation. The alleged assault occurred at a home in the 58,000 block of Peach Road. Prosecutors say the victim told them she was staying with Wood, but when his actions started making her fear for her life, she texted an ex for help. When Wood found out, he became enraged, and throughout the night, he alternated between beating, choking, and raping the victim, all while her infant child was in the home. The morning of the 29th, the woman awoke and found Wood gone. That's when she escaped and managed to flag down a utility worker who called police. Wood is currently held on $500,000 bond. A Navy SEAL was killed this morning in the fight against ISIS. Charlie Keating IV was acting as an advisor to Peshmerga forces in Iraq. The official says he was near Mosul, back from the front lines, when enemy combatants broke through and started a firefight. Keating was killed. 
He was also the grandson of Charles Keating Jr., a developer, banker, and financier best known for his role in the savings and loan scandal of the late 1980s. Still ahead, we're turning things over to Mike. He's got our Storm Team 16 forecast, and it won't disappoint. Preparing you for inconvenient weather with a color-coded forecast. Storm Team 16 is your weather authority. Here comes some more rain. A few showers developed even a little more quickly than we thought. Now, most of this is ground clutter, but let's zoom in on this, and you can pick out some showers that developed right over parts of northern South Bend, and they're now moving through northern portions of Elkhart County, mainly along US-20 there. Also, some showers developed over Berrien County, now moving through northern Cass County. But the bulk of the rain still off to the northwest, developing showers out ahead of the main line. And these are some pretty decent thunderstorms in southwestern Wisconsin. And I think these previous showers will diminish those by the time they get here. So we're only talking maybe a thunder shower in spots later tonight. 57 degrees, beautiful view of the uh, river lights in downtown South Bend. 55% relative humidity. Winds are south to southwesterly at 8. Temperatures right now still mid to upper 50s, but once the rain comes in, Temperatures will drop into the upper 40s. Here's what the future looks like with 16 Future Track. Watch the time below the line. The showers are coming, so mainly after 3 a.m., but we will get some areas of rain before that. And then widespread showers as you head to work in the morning. There's 7 a.m. Cold front comes through. It turns windy and chillier behind it. So our high temperature probably 52 around noon and then maybe even falling a couple degrees. Here's the good news. This storm's a little bit slower moving away. This uh, future track model is now showing the showers lasting well into tomorrow night and keeping the clouds in here for Thursday morning. That would diminish our chance for any frost. After that, it becomes partly sunny during the day on Thursday, still on the chilly side. Really outside chance for a bit of frost, believe it or not, under high pressure Friday morning, but then it warms up dramatically after that. Here's my Storm Team 16 forecast for all of Michiana for tonight. Showers increasing, thunder shower in some spots, low temperature down to 47 degrees. Seven day planning forecast, definite yellow day tomorrow. Windy, chilly, rain showers, 52 degrees a high, but it gets better on Thursday, partly sunny, 56, 70 on Friday, 75 Saturday. However, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, and into Mother's Day, there is at least a chance for a shower or two. And uh, taking a look at our umbrella winner, Sue Grontkowski of South Bend, the latest winner of a Storm Team 16 umbrella. We'll be contacting Sue. And if you'd like to win a Storm Team 16 umbrella, log on to WNDU.com, click on the umbrella giveaway banner and fill out the entry. Or send us a postcard with your contact information and birth date to the address you see right there. And be sure to watch News Center 16. See if we announce your name one of these shows. Another umbrella given away in every newscast right through the end of May. Back right after this with more news and sports. News Center 16 Sports with Angelo DiCarlo. Jake Arrieta shined in the Cubs' wildcard win over the Pirates last September. The reigning Cy Young continues to pitch brilliantly this year, throwing a no-hitter last week. Arietta back on the mound and facing the Pirates tonight in Pittsburgh. He gets the strikeout in the first, a sign of good things to come. And Jake showing he's not just a pitcher, helping himself out with an RBI single in the second. That makes it 2 nothing Cubbies. That's all the run support he needed. Arietta strikes out five, giving up just two hits and no runs in seven innings. Cubs win 7-1. Arietta wins his first six games of the year. He's the first Cub to do that since 1908. Uh, good things happened for the Cubs that year. Well, none of you are alive for it, so you know what I'm talking about. White Sox hosting the Red Sox tonight at the cell. Doesn't take long for the Southsiders to get going. Jose Abreu with the big blast in the bottom of the first. That's an RBI triple as Jimmy Rollins scores to make it one nothing White Sox. Now 2-1 in the eighth. Abreu comes through again, golfs this one to the wall and left. Two-run score. Sox win it by a score of 4-1. Holy War making its way to the diamond. St. Joe versus Marion. Top three. St. Joe down 2 0. Ryan Frazier gets the Indians out of the inning with the strikeout. Top of four. Knights tag on another run. Ryan Triada with the gapper to right center. Daniel Schaefer scores from first. That made it 3 0. Marion wins the Holy War over St. Joe by a score of 5 to 3. And we'll. And we have our uh, interview with Jason Spriggs online right now at WNDU.com. Concord Kid headed to the NFL with the Packers. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Yep. Wrap up of the big races coming up.
Finally tonight, we want to recap the winners of tonight's two biggest races and look forward to this coming November elections. The Democratic race was pretty tight to the very end, but Bernie Sanders pulls away with a win, pulling 52% of the votes, while Hillary Clinton checked in with 48%. That's with 95% of the precincts reporting. Also a big night for the Republicans. Donald Trump walked away as the winner in Indiana, as he confidently said he would while in South Bend yesterday. But the big surprise tonight was Ted Cruz announcing that he's suspending his race for president, leaving it between Trump and John Kasich. And New Center 16 is your home for Decision 2016 coverage. If you missed any of tonight's results, we'll have a recap bright and early on 16 Morning News, as well as online at WNDU.com. And finally tonight, we want to thank our reporting partners for their help in providing tonight's primary results, WKVI Radio in Knox and Warsaw Times Union. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here.